Hi guys, it's me, Christina, and welcome back to Reseller Revolution. Thanks for joining me again today. And I'm going to backtrack and talk about a subject that I had promised um, a few weeks ago that I would touch more on, and that is buying gold and silver um, and buying it to either resell or to or for the melt value. Now, this is going to be a very, very basic 101 um, gold and silver buying, how to identify it type of video. There is so much information when it comes to jewelry that I could never in a million years fit everything in. So there's going to be some of you out there that maybe watch this that know a lot about jewelry and say, ah, but what about this or that? And I realize that it's got some holes in it. But this is again for your basic um, person that maybe doesn't know a whole lot and they just need some something in their arsenal so when they are out maybe at a garage sale or at a thrift store that they have some knowledge with them that they can make a good buying decision if they see something in front of them and they can take that opportunity and snag it up and they don't miss it so again basic information but i hope that you find some useful usefulness out of this and if you have questions make sure you leave them in the comment but here you go here is some gold and silver buying 101s Okay, one of the easiest ways to tell if a piece of jewelry is gold or silver is just to look at the stamp. Um, a lot of the jewelry that you come across is probably gonna have a stamp in it, and then you'll come across some stuff that doesn't. So uh, we're not gonna get into the super tricky stuff today. We're just gonna cover the very absolute basics of basics, things that can help you when you're out maybe garage sailing or at the thrift to easily and quickly spot something that has the potential to be real gold or silver. As far as tools go, when you're out and about, I mean, you're not gonna be acid testing jewelry at somebody's garage sale or at the thrift store, um, unless you wanna get kicked out uh, or somebody really mad at you, obviously. So acid testing is something that you can do after you've bought a piece and you get it home, you wanna make sure that it's silver or gold and you can find acid testing kits on online pretty easily uh, but again we're not going to get into that heavy duty stuff this is just the field testing things that uh very simple tips that you can use to navigate through gold and silver buying out and about when you're a reseller so the, my first tip is on the end of this um, pair of scissors there's the magnet on there now you don't need the scissors but you do need the magnet and a magnet um is not a fail-proof way, but it's a good way to, to quickly sift through the things and eliminate things that are not gold or sterling silver because gold and silver will not magnetize. Now, the next thing is you'll want to take a good jeweler's loop with you. There's different qualities of these. You definitely want to get one that you'll be able to see it. Everybody's eyesight is a little bit different, but for me, a 10 by 21, um, as far as the magnifying of it goes seems to work pretty well for me and again you can order those on Amazon or eBay very easily but when you're out at somebody's yard sale or at the thrift store these are probably the two things that you can throw in your purse or your pocket and have with you at all times. Now a very fast way to eliminate anything that could potentially be gold uh, from a base metal is if it's tarnished. I mean if it's tarnished that's pretty easily determined that it's not going to be real gold or silver. Um, I mean, silver tarnishes, but it doesn't turn green or anything like that. If you see green on silver, then on sterling silver, then it's not real. But you probably can't see it in this video, but this chain is tarnished from silver. It used to be gold and here around the neck, you can see where it slowly kind of goes to silver. Uh, coloring so that's a pretty quick indicator or you can see sometimes on different pieces that the plating is chipped or worn so always look there first and that that will tell you right off the bat if you see that because gold obviously doesn't discolor to silver and silver will tarnish uh, will not turn green or anything like that it will tarnish but it won't turn green like a base so metal. we'll start with using the magnet so uh, i've got uh, just a array of things laying here just kind of hodgepodge of things out of uh things that i found at thrift stores and garage sales and a couple pieces of junk jewelry of my own but i just wanted to show you how the magnet test works so i've got this that's not magnetizing again i've got the magnet on the end of there 
but it is magnetizing on that clip so or on the clasp so hmm maybe maybe not we'll come back to that same clasp but not the actual chain isn't magnetized the ring's not magnetized this bracelet uh oh that clasp was magnetizing so that yeah that's probably not going to be gold it's, the rest of it does it but that clasp is I can feel a little pull there, so that's probably not gold, but we'll look at it a little closer. Uh, this chain, not magnetized. Again, the clasp is though. This bracelet, not magnetized. Same with that one. No, no, no. Uh-oh. That's magnetized, so that means that's made of a base metal. There's no way that that is silver sterling silver see it won't even come off um pull that off of there now the chain the the clasp itself or the keychain isn't magnetizing but there's probably not a strong chance that the gold and silver pawn shop in las vegas put out a sterling silver keychain so we can pretty much hundred thousand percent say that there's no way that's going to be sterling so that one's a definite no. Um, what about this? Oh, yeah, that's just junk. That's a base metal and it's from Lane Bryant. So definitely not going to be gold or silver. And for sure not gonna be real diamonds in there. So those are eliminated pretty quickly. So the rest of this stuff is maybes, maybe not. Again, it's not a, a foolproof plan that if it doesn't magnetize then it's silver or gold because there's there's just more to it than that but that is a very quick way to eliminate anything when you are sort of unfamiliar with what gold and silver actually looks like so in a perfect world um all gold jewelry or silver jewelry is going to be marked but with you know it'd say like great big deep easy to read 14 karat, 18 karat, whatever, but that's just not the case, unfortunately. There's many, many different ways that they mark sterling and gold, and there's different um, gold and silver content in different pieces of jewelry. So learning those marks or being able to at least spot them when you see the real thing, and more importantly, when it's not the real thing, is kind of the key. Now, if it's something that's cheap and, no big deal if you see it and you're just not sure. I mean, there's no harm in picking it up because that's how you learn if it's really inexpensive and you get home and you do some digging on it and you realize it's not gold. Uh, no harm, no foul. You just gave yourself a really cheap education. But if you leave something on the table and you weren't sure, the thought of that not knowing for sure and knowing that you might have missed out on a big payday can be really, really frustrating. So... There are a few stamps that that are will be on jewelry that will look like it's 14 karat or 18 or 10. Um, but there will be little indicators that will show that it's not. So something will say like 14 karat, then a 120 after it. That just basically means it's gold filled. Or if it has a GF after it, that means it's gold filled. Or GP means it's gold plated. Um, gold electroplate, GEP. So those are on the gold. Those are things to look out for because that's kind of tricky because you'll see the 14 karat on there, but you won't see the the actual indication that says, okay, this is just like not gold, but sort of gold. And we're just gonna pretend like it's a little gold. Now there are some stamps that um, that you wanna look out for. It could say 14 karat or 14 karat, 14 KP, which means 14 karat plum. So that indeed is uh, a 14 karat or 18 karat piece when you see that. Uh, so the KP is the exception to the rule amongst maybe just a couple others. But again, if it's really inexpensive and you just aren't sure, uh, Google is your best friend and, or just give yourself a cheap education and buy the piece and see what you can find out. And you, you won't make the same mistake twice if you do the research on your own. So let's get right into some pieces here that we are looking at, right? So we've decided that the magnet, uh, we eliminated the ones that weren't 
gonna pass the pass the test. So now let's see what we can find on some of these. So you always want to check the clasps. So this clasp says 925 China and then it's got this ISP here. I'm gonna try to okay so 925 China ISP and then on the clasp here you see a little writing right there but it's really difficult to see uh, if I zoom in it's going to get blurry so what this means is that this piece is indeed sterling 925 means sterling silver that means it's 92.5 percent pure silver now the reason you saw the magnet attached attached to this clasp is because these clasps are spring loaded there's a spring inside there that is a base metal and so that's why the clasp will attach so don't test it on the clasp necessarily as and rely on the chain now another little trick to look for on sterling on a chain or things like that is if the pieces are soldered soldered means it's been basically heated shut the links so the on a sterling chain the links will not be open you won't be able to just open them by hand or with a pair of pliers the only exception being the one next to the clasp because it will melt that spring inside if you get that heat to solder it that close but the rest of them as you can see there that one's soldered and this does say 925 on the clasp Typically, you'll have a, a sterling clasp if you've got a sterling chain. Not always, though, so it's always best to check. So this one was really easy to identify. If we go over here to the ring that's on it, we can see the 925 in there. So that's hands down, that's sterling. We're not going to worry about that one at all. So we're going to buy that if we found that out. If it's, you know, if it's in a pile of jewelry at the at a garage sale for a quarter we're getting that now sterling that amount of sterling isn't going to be worth a ton of money as far as the weight but it all adds up now here we've got a little bit of heavier bracelet uh, again the clasp was magnetic let's see what the clasp says and it'll tell us if this is let's see if we can see that oh there we go okay i can see I don't know if you can see it well enough 925 on the clasp and 925 Italy and this is even maybe a little a, you know designer piece maybe even possibly so again this was a garage sale pickup and this says that it's silver or sterling and I see that this one is not soldered but all because it's close to the clasp but I see that all the other ones are so I'm going to believe that to be true. This is, see how there's, you can see where it was soldered shut. So I'm gonna believe that this is sterling and I'm gonna pick that up if I find it out at a garage sale or at the thrift. Now here is a, just an old beat up bracelet. Let's see if this one's got anything on it here. Now sometimes on this, old stuff like this it can possibly be worn off okay there's something let's zoom in closer okay there's a 925 but you can see that the stamp's not that great but this is typical this doesn't mean that it's fake or anything like that now you will find some fake out and about and you'll learn a lesson the hard way maybe sometime with that but um 925 this just just is an, an older probably 70s or or earlier type of bracelet. So this is really probably just scrap metal. And if I find this at the garage sale, I'm picking it up. That's sterling. Okay. Now let's see. Let's try one more just to make sure we, we understand where to look. Okay. I'm going to zoom in close again, a spring loaded clasp. So that's going to be magnetic, whether the rest of it's sterling or not. There it says Italy. Now, sometimes um, the Italy is a good indication that it's going to be a quality piece, but a lot of times on fake jewelry, they'll put that on there just to trick you. But I can see here where this has been soldered on. So I think we're on the right track. 
Then let's see. I'm using this because by the time I, my fingers get in there, it's blocking uh, the view. So let's see if I can see it. I had it kind of lined up for you. Sorry. There it is. 925 right there. So again, sometimes they'll even have it right here in this really hard to see spot. So that's when stuff like this, that's when that loop really starts to come in handy. Um, and as you can see, I'm filming this with my iPhone. So I can't see that with my naked eye, but I've got my iPhone on this and zoomed in and I can see it. So that's almost like having a magnifying glass with you. Um, so let me zoom back out here. Now this, again, just a piece of scrap junk jewelry. It's not really anything fantastic. So I'm just gonna pick that up and add it to my pile. And a lot of times you'll find stuff like this just mixed in those jewelry box piles at the, the garage sales or in the jewelry jars at the thrift stores. So now we'll move on to uh, some other things. Now this, this bracelet is kind of tricky because it really, it has a, the right look to it. It looks like it's gold. Um, but I get in really close. This is again where your loop is going to come in handy. And I can see that there's writing on there and it looks like how a 14 karat stamp would look or anything like that. But I just can't make it out what it says for sure. Um, as far as the numbers go, but look at the end of that clasp. I can see the gold plating worn off of it at the end. So I know for sure um, we already decided the class wasn't gold. Now I would look inside the jewelry the next. I would look here to see if I see any markings at whatsoever. And I don't with this. How can we decide, especially if they've got a few dollars on this, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. You just don't know for sure well enough at this point in the game, you haven't studied it that much. So you're still kind of new to it, don't know for sure. Look, let's look at this chain. See how the, I don't know if you can see it or not, but this last loop here, they're not soldered. I don't know if you can see it. This is a difficult one, you know? Um, now I know the answer to this, but I'm looking at it through the eyes of maybe someone who doesn't, isn't f that familiar with it. The coloring is pretty good. Um, it doesn't, it's kind of muted like real gold would be. So how am I going to know? Well, this probably is when I would, I would take a chance on it if it was just a few, a couple dollars and, um, I saw it out in the wild and I would probably take a chance on it just to learn a lesson. I'd take it home and I would do an acid test on it. And again, we're not going to get into all that on this video, but this is not real gold. This is one of those situations where it's like the, the GF, the gold filled or the GP, the gold plated, uh, this symbol here. So that's, that's what this is. This is one that's, it's fooled and it's made to look like gold, but it's not. Uh, but it does have maybe like the, the gold plating on it. And it's a really, really tricky piece. And, um, you know, I learned a lesson on this bracelet because I'm going to tell you the truth. What happened here, I purchased this bracelet when I worked for a jewelry store and I purchased this over the counter from a customer I don't know what I was thinking that day and it fooled me um, or I wasn't paying close enough attention or something. And let me tell you, when you have a bracelet like this that you paid for over the counter and then it comes out of your paycheck, um, <laughs> you know real quick what to look for and to not make that mistake again. So life lesson learned on this bracelet, but I did get to keep the bracelet as a party gift. So lucky me, <laughs> but it actually, I do wear it. And I, every time I wear it, it reminds me of that. So, so now we'll go on to some things that are real gold and here's how we know. So this one, again, there are fakes that can fool you, but this one is clearly marked 
14 karat and the FZ is just a, a trademark or a hallmark stamp from uh, the manufacturer and this would 100% pass a an acid test so we know for sure that 14 karat in there and um, again you'll run into fakes but for the most part if it's stamped you're pretty good but I, w I would um if you're gonna pay a hefty chunk of change for that I would I would have some backup but we're talking about the situations where you're at a garage sale or a thrift and it's it's in a jewelry jar or it's not marked up and you just need to make a snap decision that's what we're talking about just the simple very basics today so this one again marked 14k it's got diamonds in it do we know if they're real or not a very easy way to tell is to take your loop and um, try to see if there's any imperfections in the stones any black marks most of the time in these rings they're not going to be perfect stones they're not using vvs quality diamonds in these mostly unless it's a designer very expensive designer like tiffany or something like that that's the only time you're going to get super high quality diamonds in an eternity band and um unless it's a very 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 high-end piece there you see the 14 karat this is in white gold the other was in yellow gold gold can be white or yellow and this is, you know, they rhodium plate it so that it keeps it white. Even white gold looks a little yellowish sometimes, so that's okay. That doesn't mean it's fake if your white gold looks a little yellow. So there's that. And then those were both 14. And here's just an example of an 18 carat there. If you can see in there, it's tricky, I know, with the video. Let's see if I can turn it around. I don't know if you can see that it's more it says 18 karat 750 so 750 stands for 18 karat if you were if you didn't already know that that's how if it says 750 that means it's 18 karat now just real quick i want to touch on uh coins because you may come across some coins somewhere when you're and you might think they're just a regular coin but hey it looks a little bit different i don't know what's going on with it it's a little weird there are things, such things as, as silver coins and not in pennies, you know, pennies are going to be copper, but your nickels, dimes, quarters, half dollars are all going to have certain years that were silver. Now with your nickels, you're going to have 1942 to 1945, which those are called wartime nickels. This one's 1942. So this one's going to be a silver nickel. This one's 1940, so it's not. This one, 1942 to 1945, and they don't look a whole lot different. So those are, you just have to really pay attention to the years on those. Now on a quarter, you've got your, let's see here, you've got your standard 19, let's see what year this one is. I can't really tell. I can't see the year on that one. Anyways, okay, so on a quarter, this one's 1956 and this one's much newer. I can't tell what year it says. So how am I gonna know? I mean, you can see the difference in those two pretty drastically right now from the top. It's not always that easy to tell a silver from a non-silver quarter, but this is the easiest way to tell. Look at the sides. You see that? One has got a copper line around the edge and the other one is all silver. So the, anything with a copper line is going to be not silver and anything that looks like that with no copper edging is going to be a silver. Now, if you can look at the year 1964 and prior is going to be your silver coins, your silver quarters, your silver dollars. Now, of course, there's been some some produced by the Mint that were special edition and collector's coins and things like that. But just your regular circulated coins, 1964 and before, and we're not talking about a penny, we're talking about uh, your dimes and your quarters, 1964 and before, are going, and your half dollars um, are going to be your silver. And on your, on your nickels, your 1945 to 19... I'm sorry, 1943 to 1945. Now, outside of jewelry and coins, of course, there is also 
sterling silver flatware, uh, candlesticks, and other various pieces. So how, how do you know and how do you know what's real and what's not? Well, it does get kind of tricky when it comes to some of this stuff because some of the stuff that's made in England or Germany, things like that, they'll have symbols instead of it saying flat out sterling or something like that. So that's a whole nother show all on its own. And you could spend, honestly, hours and hours and hours being a student of sterling markings from all over the world. So this is some, a few pieces that I have laying around. So I just thought I would show you the examples of the pieces that I have so you'd know what to look for. So on a spoon, again, there's flatware. Typically it'll say, let's see if I can zoom in there. Typically flatware will say sterling or and you can see this one says sterling or it'll say, you know, sometimes 850 or 900. And those are lesser, they're not sterling, but they are still silver. They just have lesser content in them. So in sterling silver flatware will typically be soft, meaning it's easy to bend. So, and there won't be any green or anything like that. You can see this one's really, really tarnished, but it still won't have any green. Sometimes people get confused. They see kind of that rainbowing effect. I don't know if you can see that rainbow effect on that. And they think that means that it's not sterling, but it that does still mean that it could still be sterling. So this one says sterling and I believe it. Now this cup says sterling on the bottom. It doesn't get any easier than that to identify it. So that's really self-explanatory. Now these candlesticks, someone might think they've really hit the sterling jackpot on these, but unfortunately you look at the bottom and it does say sterling, but it does also say weighted. And that's the key. These candlesticks are just wrapped in, a, in sterling. So the inside of them is just a, like a cement or a, or a plaster mix or whatever to keep them weighted so your candles don't fall over and, and burn your palace down. So that's why they're they're weighted occasionally you'll find some that aren't weighted and they are pure silver but those are they're going to be a pretty rare find but you do find some sterling candlesticks like this quite often and what they'll do is if you take them to to sell them or whatever they they have a typically a good idea of what the outside of that wrapping weighs and when they go to melt it they unwrap the the candlestick they unwrap the sterling off of it so there's still some value there, but not what one might think when they feel how, that heavy candlestick. All right, that's it for today's show, guys. I want to thank you again for joining me. And you can follow along with us on Instagram at Reseller Revolution. And you can follow along with me on Instagram at For the Resell of It. And I'll put those down below in uh, the description. Also, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe to this video because we put out content almost every single day. And that way, if you turn on your notification bell, you'll be notified when uh, a new video goes up. You can join us Sunday mornings live where all five of Reseller Revolution will be together. And we are at 9 o'clock a.m. Central on Saturday. No, Sunday mornings. So please come join us live and you can um, join in in the chat. Thank you and have a great weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.